Critical race theory, or CTR, is an analytical approach that seeks to address the ways in which an author, text, or audience reinforces or disrupts racist values, whether that is intentional or not. Critical race theory emphasizes the appearance of race and racism across dominant cultural modes of expression. CTR theorists recognize racism as a quotidian component of American life which is manifested through literature, media, TV shows, etc. The attempt to confront and analyze the beliefs and practices that have enabled racism to persist while challenging these factors in order to seek liberation from racism. What is racism? Racism is a discrimination towards someone of a different race based on the belief that one's race is superior. There are different types of racism. Individual racism is the beliefs, attitude, and actions of individuals that support or perpetuate racism. This type of racism can manifest both consciously or unconsciously. Institutional racism. This is a pattern of social institutions such as governmental organizations, schools, banks, courts, etc., giving negative negative treatment to a group of people based on their race. Internalized racism. This is the internalization by people of racist attitudes towards members of their own ethnic group, including themselves. This can include the belief in ethnic stereotypes relating to their own group. Interpersonal racism. This is a racism that occurs between individuals. It is the holding of negative attitudes towards a different race or culture. Interpersonal racism often follows a victim-perpetrator model. Structural racism. This one refers to the ways in which the joint operation of institutions produce racialized outcomes, even in the absence of racist intent. The history of race and why it matters. Many anthropologists and scholars in the social sciences believe that race is a cultural construct. It should be clear that this is not a definition of race, but an assertion about the scholarly or existential domain in which we can best examine the phenomenon of race. The significance of history. In the middle of the 20th century, historians began to take another look at the beginnings of the American experience. They explored all of the original documents relating to the establishments of colonies in America and discovered that in fact, Our 19th and 20th century ideas and beliefs of race did not even exist in the 17th century. Race originated as a folk idea and ideology about human differences. Historians have documented how race as an ideology came into our culture and our consciousness. For example, in 1607, 400 years ago, the first colony of America, Jamestown, was established in Virginia by the English. The colony was a crude, rough, and turbulent community of mostly young Englishmen who came to seek their fortunes and return home. They planned to emulate the Spanish to obtain wealth by conquering and enslaving the native people and forcing them to produce gold and silver. However, many of them died of European diseases. In 1619, the first Africans arrived. There has been some debate about who they were, but we know that they had Spanish or Portuguese names and were already familiar with European culture. In the U.S., it is widely and popularly believed that the colonists brought Africans to the New World as slaves from the beginning and that Europeans were naturally prejudiced toward Africans because of their physical characteristics, especially dark skin. Historians now hold that true slavery did not exist in the early decades of the English North American colonies. English men were unfamiliar with the institution. They saw their society as a free one, based on free labor, and believed that English laws had terminated all forms of slavery centuries before their arrival in the Americas. In 1942, Montague Francis Ashley Montague made a strong effort to have the word race replaced with ethnic group by publishing his book, Man's Most Dangerous Myth, The Fallacy of Race. Historical Origins of Race CRT scholarships trace racism in America through the nation's legacy of slavery, the civil rights movement, and recent events. Francois Bernier 
is believed to have developed the first comprehensive classification of humans into distinct races, which was published in a French journal article in 1684. New division of Earth by the different species of or races which inhabit it. Bernier advocated using the four quarters of the globe as the basis for providing labels for human differences. The four subgroups that Bernier used were Europeans, Far Easterners, Negroes, and Laps. The first picture on the response side is based off of his ideas that humans can be separated into four major groups. The white race, the red race, the yellow race, and the black race. Johann Frederick Blumenbach divided the human species into five races in 1779, later founded on cranial research. Description on hum- of human skulls. Blumenbach's five races. The Caucasian race, the Mongoloid race, the Malay race, the Negroid race, the American race. The pictures of the skull is his work. Italians, Jews, and Slavs were considered non-white and pol- popular political discourse of the, li- of the late 19th and early 20th century, and this discourse grew very influential in the anti-immigration movement, leading eventually in the 1920s to severe restrictions against entry of supposedly non-white groups to this country. Race versus Ethnicity Race is each of the major divisions of humankind having distinct physical characteristics, a group of people sharing the same culture, history, language, etc., an ethnic group. Ethnicity, the fact or state of belonging to a social group that has a common national or cultural tradition. You can only have one race, while you can claim multiple ethnic affiliations. You have no control over your race. It's how you're perceived by others. To help you further understand, I got an example from Dalton Conley. I have a friend who was born in Korea to Korean parents, but as an infant, she was adopted by an Italian family in Italy. Ethnically, she feels Italian. She eats Italian food. She speaks Italian. She knows Italian history and culture. She knows nothing about Korean history and culture. But when she comes to the United States, she's she's treated racially as Asian. In this person's case, she's Asian. She can't change that, but her ethnicity is Italian because that is what she is accustomed to. Stereotypes. Stereotypes are perceived notions or ideas that are used to describe a particular type of person or thing. Stereotypes are commonly used to get a sense of an idea of who someone is like based on their race, sex, or sexuality, but can often be considered as racist, sexist, or homophobic presumptions. On the right is an example of different stereotypes associated with the white people versus everyone else specifically when dealing with a violent crime or terrorist attack.
What are the historical origins of white supremacy in the U.S.? White supremacy dates back to the 17th century from the age of enlightenment to the 20th century. In 1854, when the Republican Party was created, there were Southern Democrats who built a new regime of white supremacy and had segregation that was enforced with violence. After Abraham Lincoln was elected, Southern Democrats defended slavery and created the Confederacy. After the Great Depression, the geographic shift led to movement away from white supremacy. The KKK, also known as the Ku Klux Klan, were a group of Southern Democrats who supported white supremacy, white nationalism, anti-Catholicism, and etc. The KKK holds their own political stances and opinions with peer bigotry. Bigotry is the act of being narrow-minded to opposing views, which is especially viewed in those who regard or treat members of a group such as a racial or ethnic group with hatred and intolerance. The KKK disbanded for a while in 1944. In 1960s, the KKK was reconstructed and there were many attacks. Amongst the 1950s and 1960s, white flight occurred. This was when whites purposely fled and migrated to cities that weren't racially mixed or racially dominant by a race other than European descent. In 1954 to 1968, there was the American Civil Rights Movement where there was disenfranchisement for minority voters. Disenfranchisement is the state of being deprived of a right or privilege, especially the right to vote. In 1964, Philadelphia, Mississippi, there were three civil activists, Cheney, Goodman, and Schroener, who were murdered. In 1965, Viola was the only female white activist who was killed by the Klan during the Civil Rights Movement. The KKK dealt with nativism and racist ideology as they believed that Jews, Muslims, Asians, Mexicans, and immigrants were not as superior as they were. Ethnocentrism, the belief in the inherent superiority of one's own ethnic group or culture. In the 1960s, the KKK has committed many violent crimes, and they still continue to do so to the 20th century. Events including the rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, where severe injuries and even a death took place. How is white supremacy maintained? How does it manifest in our daily existence? In the 1960s, scholars like Derek Bell, Alan Freeman, and Richard Delgado spoke up about how slow the progress has ever been since the civil rights. African Americans had to deal with disenfranchisement, being deprived of a right or privilege, especially the right to vote. In the film Freakonomics, an American documentary film based on the 2005 book Freakonomics, they talk about discriminations made against African Americans in workplaces. Employers make decisions based off of names as they are more leaned towards names that sound white rather than black. In 1979, the average black man in America earned about 80% of the average white man, $15 versus $19 per hour. By 2016, this gap has grown such that the average black male worker earned just 70% of the hourly wage of the average white, or white male worker. Cultural Appropriation the act of taking or using things from a culture that is not your own, especially without showing that you understand or respect the culture. An example that white supremacy is still manifested in our daily lives, there are many white men who are in positions of power. We only had one black president. In 2017, Charlottesville, Virginia, there was a KKK rally to oppose the decision of the city taking down one of their monuments of Confederate Gen Robert E. Lee from the park. There were counter-protesters and members of the KKK at the rally. Some members of the KKK used violence against the counter-protesters, which resulted in major injuries. An example of cultural appropriation in modern-day society is when Rachel Dolezal is a white woman who claimed to be black, despite her parents both being white. She went as far as to try to look black by curling her hair a certain way and even tanning her skin. So, what are some of the consequences of white supremacy? White supremacy led to the creation of extremist right-wing political groups which an example of this would be a secret society in the U.S. otherwise known as the KKK. 
It also has kept a lot of white men in positions of power, or gave many high prestiges. There are many politicians that are majorly white. Despite white men comprising only 31% of the population, of all Democratic elected officials, 79% are white and 65% are male. And of all Republican elected officials, 97% are white and 76% are male. Economically, in the last four years, white wealth is double what it was 30 years ago. Black and Latino wealth is at its lowest point ever recorded. One out of three blacks and one out of four Latinos is poor, and among full and part-time workers in the U.S., blacks in 2015 earned just 75% as much as whites in median hour er hourly earnings. Names that are generally not white-sounding are more likely to not get called back for job interviews, whereas those that are most likely will. Resumes with white-sounding names spurred 50% more callbacks than the ones with black-sounding names. Implicit bias, which is unconscious and relatively automatic features of prejudiced judgment and social behavior, is one of the reasons for this wage gap and for unfair employment. It not only exists in others, but it exists in ourselves too. Even if we do not want to feel that specific races are lower than our own, or our own race is worse than others, this bias and racism was planted into us through the media in order to control us to accept certain types of people. An example of implicit bias is the school-to-prison pipeline, a process through which students are pushed out of schools and into prisons. It is a process of criminalizing youth. Many youth can be tried as adults, although being minors, just because of their race. There also was a time where an officer who got captured on video violently put a 15-year-old African-American teenager on the ground and pulled out his gun on other teens who came to her aid at a pool party. The psychological trauma from that experience will surely, surely follow her and other minors being given adult punishments for quite some time. Social status can also be affected by race. The relationship between socioeconomic status, race, and ethnicity is intimately intertwined. Research has shown that race and ethnicity in terms of stratification often determine a person's socioeconomic status. Some examples of this are that American Indian, Alaska Native, Hispanic, Pacific Islander, and Native Hawaiian families are more likely than Caucasian and Asian families to live in poverty, and also that African Americans and Latinos are more likely to attend high poverty schools than Asian Americans and Caucasians. Racial formations are social and historical processes by which racial categories are created, inhabited, transformed, and destroyed. They are also the product of state practices and policies. This can result in the division of people based on race. An example of racial formation is apartheid in South Africa, where the whites created separate neighborhoods for white, black, and brown or mixed people. While looking at the ways in which white supremacy has affected the way modern society acts, try to write down examples of how you've seen white supremacy create social, psychological, political, and economic consequences in your daily life, or perhaps in the lives of others. Now here are some extra concept words we put in here that we weren't sure where to place in other slides of the scaffolded lecture. You can write these down if you believe these are helpful. Number one, endogamy. The custom of marrying only within the limits of a local community, clan, or tribe. Number two, model minority. A demographic group whose members are perceived to achieve a higher degree of socioeconomic success than the population average. Number three, acculturation. Cultural modification of an individual, group, or people by adapting to or borrowing traits from another culture. Number four, assimilation. 
a cognitive process that manages how we take in new information and incorporate that new information into our existing knowledge. Number five, naturalization. The legal act or process by which a non-citizen in a country may acquire citizenship or nationality of that country. Number six, stereotype threat. Refers to the risk of confirming negative stereotypes about an individual's racial, ethnic, gender, or cultural group. Number seven, overt. Done or shown openly, plainly, or readily apparent, not secret, or hidden. Number eight, reparation. The making of amends for a wrongdoing by paying money or otherwise helping those who have been wronged. Number nine, resistance. The refusal to accept or comply with something. The attempt to prevent something by action or argument. Call to action. Be a critical thinker. Recognize that there is nothing natural about the meaning and the narratives we have assigned to race and ethnicity. Recognize that within our society, cultural artifacts seek to perpetuate or occasionally disrupt white supremacy. Don't succumb to these hegemonic power structures. Don't be fixed. If we encounter someone undergoing discrimination from white supremacy, try to help them and bring them to justice. Don't be on standby. Understand that without our critical race lens, we cannot recognize the roles of these artifacts and therefore internalize and perpetuate racial ideology.